Hi, my name is Dave Greco, art lead at Artcraft Entertainment, and currently going to go through the uh, next concept piece I did of the uh, female centaur. This one is a uh, lot longer of a piece than previous, so I can take my time with it. Uh, just to have a little catch up first, um, kind of started with a quick sketch. I just wanted to get a quick sketch down uh, before starting recording. It was only about like 10 minutes just to make sure I had something solid to work with so I didn't have a bunch of wasted recording time. Also going to be enjoying my coffee this morning while I record this. So basically, for this one, this was thanks to our uh, Kickstarter rewards to have a version of the Female Centaur, so I was super excited to work on this one. Basically, we had the design of the Male Centaur pretty much figured out. We've been doing some tweaks um, in the past weeks, kind of really nailing down his armor designs. So, and I know I had a base idea of where I wanted to go with the female. I definitely wanted her to be as proud as the male one, as strong, as robust. And I think when starting this one right here, she still felt a little, um, maybe a little too thin and maybe not as proud enough. And as you can see, I'm really kind of just pushing things all over the place. I really just want to get a um, silhouette down. And then before I start figuring out any real details, like I want to make sure her shoulders are angled the way I want, the arms are where I want. And I think I move her arms around quite a bit. A lot of things actually around quite a bit. Uh, this part of the painting is pretty exciting for me as I can kind of just move things around. I'm not married to anything at all. And I can basically just keep shifting everything around. Also on a quick note, I actually put out that I had a, um, if people wanted to ask me a couple questions about my process at Concept Art in general uh, through Twitter, and I actually got a few in. So I can take a, can take a couple minutes to answer some of these. One of them was from uh, Sword Rule asking, did you find moving from family-friendly concept art, I'm assuming, to be a transition, or were you always ready for something like Crowfall? Uh, when I worked at uh, King's Owl working on Wizard 101 and Pirate 101, the audience definitely skewed a lot younger, and so it's definitely having to go uh, a lot bigger, a lot cartoonier with a lot of the designs and how I rendered it, which I... Which was strange at first going into the position. Um, I used to do more photorealistic concept art for uh, first person shooters. And I actually found that really um, awkward for me to do. It didn't really fit my style. I kind of found my style, I felt like, more working on Wizard and other more stylized games. And then I think transitioning over to Crowfall was super easy, as I feel like I am doing completely like my style of work. You know, Todd and the rest of the team have been super great that really I just sit down and paint what I feel is going to work the best for me. And really trying to tailor it. Like, I like a stylized look, but it's still serious in a way, if that makes any sense. So it's totally natural. I just really paint how I want to look. And that's basically has become our style, which is I can't ask for more. So it's been really great. Uh, for this painting real quick, I definitely wanted to get darker skin tones on these characters. Um, I think she was probably too dark at the beginning, so I wanted kind of like a, like a really dark olive skin. I thought it would have worked really well. But uh, I don't want to focus on it too long and spend too much time figuring that out. There's still so much to nail down. You know, I really want this. Something with these centaurs is that um, they're really well kept. They're so proud and take care of themselves that their hair should be done up, their tails should be braided. You know, they have very decorative armor. Looks like those. Really trying to shift the chest round perspective. A lot of these concepts, I don't have like, I should probably spend maybe like an hour in the morning trying to dig up reference. But these pieces have to be done so fast. I usually try to do these in about uh, two days per piece. I can't sh like go out and like shoot a ton of reference, you know, or 
sometimes I don't want to waste like half a day finding perfect anatomy reference. So that can be tough. I always wish I had more time for reference. I wish I could shoot more reference. I think these, uh, you know, it always comes out better in the end if you put the work in beforehand. Didn't get to see me um, squashing it and resizing it. I think I actually had a pretty low resolution. And then once I got to a uh, decent place, I just up it. I usually up it to around 300 DPI, and it's usually like 5,000 by 8,000. So still figuring out parts of the face. I do rework this face in this video about five times. Just fine. That's definitely, if that's what you got to do, that's what you got to do. I never feel married to really any piece of painting. I'll always just scrub it right off and start over if I need to. I think it's great because you can, I used to really get stuck on a part that I thought worked really well and I would be unwilling to change it, even though if it was breaking the entire piece. So that's always a problem. So at least starting to figure out, you know, lighting direction. Um, you know, pretty generic lighting direction just coming from the, right now, top left of the piece coming onto her. But I also, um, I think at one point I like it good amount of uh, bounce light coming from the sky. I want to kind of room around the face and the back of the armor. I also noticed that her design on the chest was starting to be quite a bit different than the male. And I didn't really want, I don't think it was really necessary to show like cleavage or anything. So we wanted to really fill out her breastplate, really thicken it up. She doesn't really need anything like that. So start blocking that in. Really just cleaning up the sides of her face. Actually, got a, um, another question from Twitter. was, uh, What sort of brushes and brush styles do you use for your art? Um, really, you can kind of see quick glances of all the brushes that I use. When I uh, pull down real quick, um, usually I've, I found brushes online, or I have a couple custom ones that I've made. I've kind of been stuck on this really kind of flat squarish brush where it's soft on one side and hard edged on the other. Um, I, I feel like I've been using it for too long and I feel like it sometimes it creates more work for me uh, than I need. I ha end up doing a lot of cleanup around it. So I think brushes is actually not one of my strongest suits. I, I wish I had a better collection of brushes. I think I'd be able to pull off better, more detailed work faster if I had a better set. Um, problem is they usually just kind of feel like I always have to dive into a piece as soon as possible and I probably don't spend as much time with my brush management or creating new brushes as I should because I think for digital artists it is important you know I wouldn't consider I would not consider brushes a clutch at all um, as di as digital artists you you need them they help you know you can get some fantastic effects and looks that you're just not gonna get otherwise I think the it's super important I think for a long time I I tried to ignore it. I don't know if it felt like it was cheesing up the art or what. I think you always kind of have that stigma as being a uh, digital painter anyway, which in the past few years I fully accepted, which I love it. There's no going back for me. Um, right now it's trying to like look inside the armor and trying to figure out the anatomy of her arm. I'm pretty sure I just, I'll just wax out that whole arm at one point and kind of restart it. Sometimes you get caught up in the armor where the uh, arm is shooting out, and then if you actually take the time to think about it, you're like, about it, and be like, where is that shoulder actually connected to the arm? It's probably not in the right place. Sometimes the uh, armor can confuse you a little bit about it. This part was pretty good. Sometimes I try to figure out that your sky should always feel, at least if it's, it's sunny out, it really needs to feel like a light source. And sometimes I realize that when the sky gets too dark or it feels too overcast, I really want to brighten it up. Right here I'm at the point where I feel like I have a, a semi-stable base for at least her 
posture and position and some general shapes for her body. I'm like, I, re I really need to figure out this, this background because right now it's just a bunch of weird... I guess there's a blue sky and some twigs behind her, which doesn't make any sense. And it also felt like maybe it's a little too claustrophobic for her pose, you know? She wouldn't exactly just be hanging out in the woods. So figuring out some more shapes. As you saw before, I added a little top to the uh, her spear. If it doesn't work, just get rid of it. You know, that's the beauty of this stuff. Just keep messing around. And that's something I tend to do a lot too, is uh, I'll copy and paste the whole image, plop it in, and I'll just shrink it down, and then I'll just keep extending the borders. Working high res enough where it's not really affecting it too much, the piece in general. And I don't want to feel like too claustrophobic or I'm cutting everything off or I'm getting weird tangents of her filling the entire frame. So I think that's important. I think this was one of the major directions of the piece. I'm like, I just need to knock out most of this background, all this green stuff, super distracting. And I want to get really saturated with my sky. I want to really push some of the color in this one. And I feel like that kind of color will really make her pop. And so then, I'll, you know, like most artists, I love this part. Let's forget about the rest of the piece. And let's start noodling on some details. I think for some reason it had stopped recording for a few minutes. And I had like slightly adjusted her eyes. Which, uh, which is a shame and mess, but it doesn't matter because I'm pretty sure I knocked these out, eyes out a couple more times and get some new ones in. So basically, starting to get a bunch of forms figured out in the face. Where her cheekbones actually line up. This is always like a tough place, especially for some of these profile characters. Because, yeah, I, you know, I like painting attractive looking characters, but I. I still want them to feel tough and heroic. I think that's super important for our game. So I'm careful not to push the face to what I would call final. You know, the rest of the piece is so unfinished. I just want to get this up to maybe maybe a 60% level, you know, and then go back to it later. You know, I, don't, I don't want to get too crazy. You know, I think it's a good lesson to always work an entire piece at the same time. Because so I think, like, even as I watch this over again, there's a lot of parts. Seeing her face, I was like, oof, you know, the highlights above her lips. The contrast back to her cheek is way too sharp. It seems odd, and, you know, parts of her face are still muddy. But I'll get to those later. That's why it's good to zoom out a little bit too and kind of work at this level where I can at least see the other parts of her. I'm not just totally have her face full screen. You can get kind of lost in it. Try to get a little texture going on her face so it wasn't just a flat airbrush color. Or that airbrush softness I should say. This is always a good time to look up some good um, lighting reference for faces. I keep a, um, a Pinterest open up some of my favorite lighting schemes on faces or I think that stuff is good to have. I think a good collection of reference that you do find along the way and try to save it out can save you some time also. Because for a concept artist, time is pretty much the name of the game. You know, you just need to push out a colossal amount of work. You don't get like a, a week of painting to do, which would be great. Sorry, you have to listen to me drink my coffee. This is probably like a 45 minute video, so. So here I'm really trying to push. I think I use just like an overlay layer. Actually, I think I'm just uh, going through the layers. I'm really trying to find a skin tone that will be close to what I want to work with. Like I said, I think she was a little too dark. I wanted her like a dark olive. And then I started having a little fun pushing some of the sky color in her. But some of the blue around her eye, I actually wanted to be that more of like kind of like a like of a makeup war paint. Instead of just like smearing red or black paint on it, I want it to look 
more like makeup. Something that makes her a little bit different. She seemed like a good base on the face. The face was good enough to move on to the rest of the piece. There's still so many things unfinished. It was starting to stress me out a little bit. I think I started thinking of, I started looking at reference of some landscapes of Scotland and Ireland. Some of these huge green fields. Feels like some place that uh, they'd really be at home with. How she uses this little crown and wears a helmet. Definitely, you know, something we could figure out in the future. That's something I tell the modelers they can figure out. Something that they're usually happy to hear. Like I said, I really wanted them to be pretty decorative. But she really does her hair out, earrings. You know, they're... They can kick your, kick your butt in war. But they're also very, very... Uh, Proud and I like to wear all their ornaments. I really wanted to show that. Like I said in my previous video, and I, what, how I think is a good way to work is I really don't want to push anything to 100%. I don't want to hit my final highlights, and I don't want my darks to be as dark as they, they will be at the end. It's all about starting in the middle as you paint. And keep pushing highlights, darks, highlights, darks, and you're just pushing out and out to those extreme contrasts as you go. And you're kind of just feeding off each other, comparing, comparing. You know, there's just so much of that in illustration or art. Is looking at like how one shape is doing it next to this other one, has this color compared to the color next to it. How is that color comparing this one? And you're constantly bouncing back and forth. You know, most artists, artists will understand that, uh, you know, by the time you're, you're done with the painting, you, your brain feels exhausted. Because there's just constant, constant comparisons, you know, going back and forth. You're constantly thinking, your brain's going like a thousand miles a minute. You're not just playing with crayons all day. And so I remember pushing out the bottom of her arm. I wanted her to actually have, like, pretty thick arms like large biceps you can see like almost like her triceps hanging down she still should feel thick and super strong especially since her male counterpart is so large i thought that was something really important we need to convey with her and it's something i saved to later too in case you're wondering what that bulbous shape was on her hip she was going to be holding her helmet. I think I, I definitely saved that for later. I think that was more of those things that I get into the piece and I'm going to have to figure out reference for her hands and the helmet. And I just didn't want to stop and try to tackle that. So I figured there, there were so many other things to figure out. We might as well keep moving. So I want to add a little bit of uh, really re detail just to break apart these larger blank shapes. Pop a couple highlights. I actually did go on those highlights probably quicker than I, I usually would. But I always figured I could just knock them back a little bit later if I needed to. Uh, at one point I did have to stop and look at a bunch of horse reference. That is definitely something that I haven't painted enough in my life to just kind of know how it all works. I think right now these, I was just figuring out general shapes without looking at reference yet. I think at one point I just paused and looked at some reference. Also beginning, I noticed her the horse body was too small, especially compared to the male. His lower horse body is huge. It looked like she was charging at you. He would just barrel you over. So she kind of had to have the same type of size. Especially in our game where collision really matters, she should be close to the size of a male. I also notice on these shoulder pads that, like, the, I guess, the lips of it, how it curls around our back is super janky right now. It's driving me nuts even watching it. I think I, I cleaned it up a little bit in the future, but it's still pretty, it's still very weird.
What makes it nice about working on these secondary, I mean, I guess not secondary carries, but characters after the first one, is a lot of the armor we have a bit figured out. So I don't have to do kind of an illustration and conceptualize what the armor is going to look like at the same time. So it makes it a little bit easier where I can kind of just look at what we have made. Figure out a version that matches the female because her chest is definitely a little bit different. I still want it to look feminine. The other one on the male is so massive it would look it would look odd on her. So just lots of noodling. I like to have some of that light coming out from below her armpit there, kind of coming around on the breastplate and the back of the belt. To have some of that blue come around. Yeah, really starting to figure out the thickness of that arm. And also, I had um, people that did send me questions over Twitter. I am uh, always try to answer any questions people might have about concept art, working in the industry as a concept artist, illustration in general. You know, you can always find me at My Electronic Day. I think that's what it is. Yeah, My Electronic Day. On Twitter, I'm always happy to answer as many questions as I can. Now, I usually cannot answer any crow fall gameplay questions. That's usually all up to desirance, but, you know, I love to answer as many art questions as possible. Especially, I talk to a lot of people that are trying to get into the art field, whether they have, are older, looking to go back to art school, or whether they're art, stu art students in high school, looking for schools to apply to. You know, I always wish I had someone to answer those type of questions. When I was younger, I think it would have helped immensely. So, I'm always there if anyone needs any questions. Questions answered. I'm trying to work the bottom of this piece now. You know, I can't kind of ignore parts for so long. Even though I know there's a lot of detail in all the pieces. You know, on her back. Which is going to take a bunch of concentration to figure out. I think right here, I was like, I can't just keep painting over this part of the arm. It's better if I just, you know, paint the whole sky in, create a new layer, and then paint the arm in over it. It's just going to be cleaner. And then I won't have as much cleanup to do later. So I'll kind of start with just like a base line drawing, how it's going to work. I kind of know the sides of her arm now, which makes it a lot easier. I can kind of paint the outline of the armor. It looks like I got that far and got distracted again, which happens. You kind of want to bounce around. I think I started to realize that there's just not the eye shapes or proper eye shapes that I should have going. Did some time, look at some more reference. Sometimes I'll actually shoot some reference at people in the office so I can get the, the right angle. Sometimes I find just using uh, the circle shape tool and just use that for the, um, the pupils. It's a lot easier for me. Sometimes I get wonky shapes in the opposite eye. And then I'll kind of use that and then paint over it and I'll kind of keep painting over it. Just make sure it works properly. Yeah, as I looked at more reference, I kind of realized that some of the, um, the shadow shapes under her eye socket just weren't lining up properly. I wanted to kind of clean a bunch of that up. So now, like every kind of stage you go back in, you can add a little more detail, clean it up just a little bit more. You know, depending on how much time you have, it's just back and forth, back and forth. And I wanted to widen her nose a little bit, change her lips up. And I want to get a little bit, you know, warmer tones in her cheekbones and her nose. Try not to go too crazy with how warm I make their nose. You know, I, I used to go a little nuts, like bunch of those hers do at one point. Make a bunch of super red noses. Try to kind of take it easy on it. Really starting out, I wanted to bulk her up even more. Felt like her just being larger and larger. Felt like a, felt like a good thing. So we're back to filling up the arm. One thing I need to do, definitely in the future, is just shoot a ton of hand reference. 
hand holding swords, hand holding pull arms, holding staffs from tons of angles. I end up looking up a lot of the same stuff over and over. I tend to have a lot of the same angles of characters holding weapons. It'd do me a lot of good just to have like a really fantastic of high res references I can just head off of. That'd be great. So right now, I think I'm just hitting no reference, just paying out the basic shapes. So I can kind of just generalize some shapes to the fingers without having a reference too much right now. Done enough of these hands where I can at least fuse my brain. You know what? That's one great thing about doing it, uh, usually, too. Just crop it, copy and paste it out, rotate it, scale it. You know, you can get some clean shapes with the lasso tool. What's great too is lassoing it out, coloring it in, having its own layer. You know, then just control click the layer. Usually I'll control H it also just to get rid of the uh, marching ants. And then, you know, I'm constrained right in it. I can kind of paint some light coming around the edge and I don't have to really spend a lot of time Making sure I'm staying within it. Especially on a uh, Wacom tablet where it's a little bit harder than a Santeek. I feel like to keep the uh, lines as straight and precise as I normally would. All right, as you can see, I definitely want her arms big. Her, her arms may even get a little large in the future. You can see right there, like her, her whole hands almost as big as her head. She's definitely pretty large. So we're starting to scale this whole part of the body up. Definitely more is looking at it. Her torso looks way too large for her. What would be a horse body? You know, I think even in the final piece, it probably could have gotten a little bit larger. The model probably will look a little bit bigger than how this piece looks. But, I, didn't, you know, I was starting to like how the, especially towards the end, how the composition was working. I don't think it was super important. That was one big thing about these pieces being made too is, is they're a concept piece, you know, they're a marketing piece, they're the show. They really want to get users excited about an archetype. So, and you know, that's the thing with concept art. You're usually trying to kill, you know, I would say, you know, five birds with one stone. You know, you want to try to appease modelers, you know, marketing. You know, you want to print it in case, you know, paint it in case it gets printed to get put around the office. You know, concept art is used to unify a team's vision, you know, get everyone on the same page, you know, get a team excited. So you're, you're tackling, you know, you're appeasing a lot of masters with uh, concept art. And I think it's super important to have all those in mind. You know, I, I think it's important to know that you're trying to appease all those really before your kind of like own artistic desires. You know, a lot a lot of concept artists get caught up in you know, painting what they want or what they think looks the best, you know, which you know, helps a lot. You know, to get really into a piece and I think you're going to get a better result out of it. But you always got to remember like what the piece is served for and how many people is trying to serve. Yeah, you know, which is important. You know, it's tough because especially like a piece like this, you know, you're only kind of appeasing modelers. You know, having like a tail hiding the entire back legs. You know, if this was a, f a first look of our centaur, you know, you probably make a modeler go nuts. I've definitely gotten messages from modelers in the past. You know, you don't want them covering up stuff. You don't want the lighting totally changing what the color of the armor is. You know, so I don't really want to know exactly what they have to do. Which makes sense. So you shouldn't have like crazy like spell effects covering up half the body. You know, say if, if hey they just want it they just want a uh, a T pose of it front and back, maybe a side view, and they'd be happy. You know, but you know, most marketing teams or the rest of the team just don't want to see a bunch of T pose concept bar pieces. Those are kinda of used just for feeding modelers. So right now we're just trying to do what we can with the time we have. 
which is always pretty exciting. So I'm not gonna lie, I don't really enjoy doing T pose concept art pieces. As you know, you just kind of do it just to figure it out for the modeler. So I'm still working out the back. I had, I was, I know I like the blue that was going on. And I was gonna do this kind of like Ireland majestic countryside in the background. As it kept going, I still didn't really like it very much. I also didn't like how that the helmet kind of just came so close to the edge of the piece. I felt like a really nasty tangent. Even if I brought the bristles of hair off it, I felt like I was still cheating it off the uh, off the page. Which I don't think was doing me any, any great service. I did kind of like how it's going with the really dark, sharp shadows coming off her shoulder plate on her neck piece and chest plate. So still bending a lot of these shapes. I still always have like a weird time drawing pieces, bending around the body. I, I'm not sure why. I think I have a mental block where I can't properly do it. So I, was, I think I was just painting some ruins in the background. I really want to just totally, I just have kind of like a noisy textury brush, just brush in some light clouds nothing too complicated no weird colors in them really just some white kind of fluffy clouds hanging out in blue sky pretty simple but i wanted them to help the uh movement of the sky in the piece so you kind of see off the uh corner of the page the layers are just building up and building up I have a problem with making a massive amount of layers. So I just want to do a, like a loose design of a spear. I really didn't know where I wanted to go right now, which is always fine. Just paint some general shapes in, figure that out later. Start brushing in the background. I think it was pretty soon kind of changed the direction of the background. Yeah. I mean, think about how many times this piece has probably been shrunken and moving into the center of the piece. I got to keep changing how the, the whole flow of it works, which is good. Keep, keep changing what it needs to be. Yeah, this is where I was like, I, I just need to change this background. None of this felt like it was working for me. I really want to get a little more fantastical with it. You know, I like the idea of our game where you've had basically these chosen heroes from world to world. So this could have been a different world. This could have been a different world in the past. Who knows where it was? So, you know, I don't have to get so locked down in creating a landscape that only existed in the world that we live in right now. And I could use it a bit to kind of direct your eye the piece which always helps so it's nice I could get a little loose again I feel like all the green isn't helping too much even though she still has a bit of the green bounce light in her breastplate huh? which is fine But she definitely needs, needs a bunch of contrast still pushing her and just pulling out some of these background shapes. I could keep some of uh, background shapes pretty saturated, which I felt was helping quite a bit, especially to the top left of her head was very saturated, and then I could pull some of that down below her helmet. I thought it was some good balance. What was nice around this stage is you know, having Todd or Melissa in, it could kind of give me feedback as I was working on it. And I think I had them come in and give me a bunch around now. Todd actually wanted to see like a bunch of like red hanging banners hanging down from her spear, which I thought was a great idea. 
kind of could add a little bit more movement, a little more color. I think I had some of those in soon. After I figure out the spear a bit more. Getting some of that red in. So basically for um, a lot of the towers and banners hanging down, I'll create a new layer and just start playing with these shapes. Try to figure them out until they are a shape and silhouette that I really like before I even try to render them out. And I'll mess with these a bunch. I'll put it in and then I'll get an eraser and just kind of knock out some shapes in it. You know, keep trying some new ones. As you can see, I just ripped through a bunch. You know, that's not working or this one's working. Or this one felt close. You know, keep just... Sometimes the randomness of these brushes can do some work for you. You know, copy and paste that out. And then I'll just use the warp tool and it kind of create the exact shape that I want. This kind of swooping motion of it felt like it helped the uh, more that eye movement from top to left. Then hopefully kind of come back around through her her leg kind of pointing down into the tail and as the tail curls up your eye kind of goes back up to the top of the piece. You know, it's not perfect but I feel like it was kind of doing the trick here. No, it's just, you know, more and more polish. I feel like I can see the whole piece at this point. Now it's just getting everything lined up. All the highlights pushed to where they need to go. All the shadows pushed to where they need to go. I think there was also more feedback coming close to the stage where I was sending around to the team. Everyone was lighting direction so far, but didn't exactly have the same amount of detail level that the male had, which is true. So I wanted to go back in, take a coffee break, do what needs to be done, recharge, and get back into doing some more detail. Sometimes it's easy to get to this point, especially for me. I think I have problems staying on a piece too long, or I kind of get the idea of like, oh, it's good enough, you know? And I always wish I could push pieces further into a level of, you know, I wish I could spend like 40 more hours really making every inch of this piece phenomenal. So sometimes at this stage, I really gotta get my, take some breaks, get myself back into it, and really push out some of those details where they need to be. Like even looking at right now, her her hand holding the helmet hasn't even been figured out, which is kind of crazy. I probably should figure that out. But. Like there still needs to be a whole much, much more detail added to her lower part. She still needs some of those kind of ankle bracers that the uh, the male has. They have a whole bunch of like ha hanging little tabard pieces hanging from her side, and I think those need to go in. I think those are important. You know, her tail is huge here. Probably not representative of how big it will be, but you know, maybe we'll get some length in the game. These characters are crazy enough. Also, one thing about going through feedback and looking at the piece, some of the highlights in their areas probably didn't need to be there. Say, like, that kind of highlight on her butt. I think it was better to get rid of it and kind of just push that part of her body back in space just a tiny bit. Just so her the front part of her body stood out more. Like, even looking at the piece now, I think her, her lower body could be a bit bigger. Like I said, that's just it's just more more time needed to make those kind of kind of changes. But I think I think it works. I think it works well enough. You know, I didn't think I had to really flesh out a ton of detail with the hand holding it. You know, her her elbows going out. You know, you can't see, it, and then her hands holding the helmet. It's enough to show what we're going for. Let's see here. 
think this is probably the stage where I want to start touching up some of the bottom. We can actually add a uh, slight amount of depth of field. I don't do too much depth of field in my pieces. Uh, I just want to do like a tiny bit. You should be careful not to overdo it. Um, you know, usually I'll mess with the curves or the levels, jack that up a bit. I guess this is the kind of point where I, I thought I was near done. Usually I tend not to sign a piece until it's finished. And I think that's a good way to do it because usually when you sign a piece, you're kind of calling it done. And I think it's a dangerous thing to do. I sign it too early. I probably got a little ahead of myself. Yeah, so this is probably after the round of feedback. Going back in. Just get more of these details in. And I think, which is great to have. I think the piece is stronger having all these smaller pieces figured out. Basically, even just these smaller pieces, I just use like a flat color, a flat general color of the piece, just to block out the shapes and then just work in shadows and highlights. You know, I don't get too complicated. Let me figure out too much. Especially on a part of the piece that's really not like a focal point. I just want it on her to show she's wearing it. You know, it's not something you should be staring at with your eye for too long anyway. Just getting more of some of that blue light coming around the edges. We also want to get uh, some of those braids in her tail too. Like it was definitely clear that her her uh, tail wasn't as rendered as the rest of the uh, things in her body. So I want to go back in, just clean it up a little bit. You know, just getting a little more detail in. Just kind of brush it out. You know, I don't need to spend like three hours just having like a whole tail of crazy braided hair. Then you just throw in a couple kind of general shapes. You gotta show us in there. Get the idea. You know, this is my great part too. I basically just create one little circular medallion that's decorative on our belt. And then I can kind of just shade and highlight them separately. And then you get the, uh, what you're looking for. I think those were nice details to have added in. I thought it helped a lot. Then back adding some more details that were, did exist on the male and get it carved into her armor also. You also realize her tabard down here was pretty unfinished. Should have got detailed up a little bit more. So that's that's important, you know, that'll show where your deity is and all that in game. Since we want to have that representative on a lot of the armor. Kind of getting a little more deep red put into some of the red highlights. Don't really want to go too white with the highlights on this one, I felt like a lot of the highlights were showing in the saturation of the color and I wanted to keep it that way. All these little tassels hanging down could have actually extended a little bit further, but I didn't want too many covering up her leg. I thought showing her leg there I thought was an important part of the piece. I kind of just tucked him behind it for this one, which I thought was fine. I didn't want to cover up the whole front half of him. Might seem a little weird. Just kind of tuck a couple of them back here. Just, you know, same thing. Everywhere, everywhere in the piece, just like a generalized color. You know, I usually jump into the color really fast. Just get some shadows and highlights on it. Get the idea of it. And we're good to go. I think we're getting towards the end of the piece, though. I just want to thank everyone for taking the time and watching this one. It's been definitely a lot longer than the previous Templar video. But I hope it shows a little more of my process, a little more thoroughly. You know, I don't really get too complicated in how I paint. You know, I learn a lot with each piece. And I try to take it into the next one. You know, and that's just how it is this stuff. It's just, you just gonna paint every day. I always say, you know, every piece you just get like 0.01% better, so just knock out a couple a couple thousand paintings and you'll get there. Just over and over, you know. I'm definitely 
nowhere near where I, 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 I want to be. That's for sure. You know, I think every artist feels that. You know, I feel like I'm only starting my journey of like a lifetime of artwork. But this one was uh, a lot of fun. Thank you so much for uh, for the journey of this piece. I had a ton of fun with this one. Thanks a bunch, guys.